there's a lot of new technologies on display. I mean, uh, we've already spoken about this previously, but we've got the, the robo job behind us here on the DNM 5700. We've also got uh, a seminar on automation as well. We've got the new Puma 2600 S Wine Mark II. We've got Sandvik's Prime Term. So all in all, for engineers, there's a lot of technologies to come and see. James, we've heard a lot about Prime Turn, and this is quite a simple demo, but what is it illustrating? Yep, thank you, Joe. Well, it's good to see that you've heard about it. It's a fairly simple demo because we wanted to show off the capabilities of what you can do in mass turning, really. So real advantages are increased tool life, but also metal removal rates. I mean, typically it would be roughing at 0.6 mil, 0.7 mil feed, but we are not turning towards the chuck, we are now coming away from the chuck. I know that you've done. Can you tell me a little bit about this demo and how you've manufactured that part? Yeah, well, uh, I was asked to do something on a PC635AX. Got on the internet and found a model of a, a human head and thought, using a Mastercam uh, 2017, I programmed it and yeah, just made it as a demo. We're here today to look at a, a new machine that we're about to purchase from Mills. Uh, we have a number of Doosans already and we've taken the opportunity to come up to the open day to have a look at the other uh, equipment they've got here. Anything that's sort of tickled your fancy so far? Well, I just saw that machine there, the uh, twin, the uh, Doosan uh, B-axis machine cut a, a gear spline on a shaft uh, with a synchronised milling uh, setup, which I've never seen before. It's quite incredible. And the partner events are really important to us to promote clean mist in the working environment. As you can see from their, their showroom, they've got a, a lot of live demos with all our filter mist units on, and they can run them as hard as they want and still have meetings, as you can see, and they can kind of eat food near them because they've got a clean workshop or clean showroom. And you can see, I think we might, I might have about 11 filter mist units, as you can see from behind us. So the partnership is really important for us to promote this clean, working, safe environment. We're looking at possibly automating the production line of low volume, high complex parts for the aerospace industry, where typically they're not square billet formation, so it's how a robot would fit around traditional how would manufacture the part. So it's does the tooling go up as a consequence of the robot? How would it all work together? Or would it long term pay off? Or are you better off looking at twin power options rather than your robot? Uh, we're mostly here to look at the automation. Um, automation is, is becoming more important these days, so, uh, so we're just coming to have a look at that and see how we, it integrates with uh, the modern machine tools. So in, in, in regards to automation, are you looking to, to, to introduce automation to run lights out or to fill a skill shortage? It's a bit of both really. What, what we're finding is that it is more difficult to find skilled uh, machine operators and centres, skilled engineers. So to try and fill some of that gap and increase um, our output without increasing our hours too much, then um, introducing automation gives us a little bit extra. Well, from the customer's point of view, we're here as a specific part of the mills operation to provide tailor-made packages for our customers. They're going to be very competitive, so the customers who may already have their own in-house bank providing finance, we can provide a very good, cheap and alternative to their bankers, whereby they're going to be using an alternative source for the finance, uh, and so they're not going to be reliant upon their bank to provide the facilities for them. So even if you're cash rich and, and the money's in the bank, is it, are you still better off financing? Uh, a lot of customers will still finance because they want to keep the money in their back pocket and keep it within their bank account. You have to remember for customers, if they have to fund a project, they need cash flow to fund a project depending upon the work that they're doing. So we can provide a very competitive alternative source of finance for them other than their own bank. From my point of view, I would always advocate that customers keep their bankers for cash flow purposes rather than tying up their facilities with say five year higher purchase funds whereby they, they've tied up their facility for such a long time. So it sort of cuts their headroom and facilities with their banks. James, this boring bar is nearly a metre in length. What size cup can you take with such a uh, long boring bar? 
Well, because of its leading damper technology, Geo, you can take a 3 mil depth of cut, 0.25 feed, and this is a 14 times D boring bar, so it's actually 920 mil depth you can bore with this. So, uh, with this length, are you going to get any deflection um, or vibration? Yes, you will get deflection, but it's repeatable deflection. So we know how much it's going to deflect after we've taken a cut, and then we use a three-pass method to ensure we get the right size. With regards to chatter and vibration, up here we have technology. In the front here, damping technology, which enables us to give up to 14 times D bar performance in something that is unique to Sambit Coroman. At MTD, we always like to get a good story when we're out and about travelling around. Will, you've just purchased a Doosan machine from Mills CNC. Firstly, tell us the machine that you bought. So we just bought a 220LSY. Which is exactly this machine here, isn't it? Yeah. And, and you did a lot of extensive research. And where, yeah. where would that have started? What started you on this journey to buy a Mills machine? Uh, so I spent a lot of time researching on YouTube, uh, learning a lot about the uh, suppliers and different types of machine tools that are available on the market. Um, we started around a year ago looking for the machine uh, that we ended up purchasing today. And as the influencer, would you say that MTD has been part of that? Uh, definitely, 100%. Um, the information is unparalleled and the, uh, the, just the information that we're able to gather uh, from videos and from learning from yourself and uh, yeah, it's really helped in our purchasing decisions. Uh, yeah, we've always found it quite difficult to automate milling. Um, turning machines over the years have had bar feeders, uh, sub spindles, um, exit conveyors, things like that, and we've invested in those, but it's always been very difficult for prismatic components on milling machines. And flexibility is key as a subcontractor. We don't know what we're going to be doing in the next month or two, never mind next year, so we need to be as flexible as possible on a, a wide range of materials, sizes, shapes, all sorts of things. Yeah, we, we wanted to demonstrate um, some of the ranges of tools that we uh, supply. We're agents for the big Kaiser tool holders, as well as the Kaiser boring systems. Um, also our own solid carbide product, and the Whittier solid and the Dexwell product. Mills asked us to demonstrate the power of the machine, which has given us the opportunity to put some of the larger diameter tools on. So we've got a 50 mil porcupine cutter from Whittier, a large 45mm U-drill on a VT40 back end from Kaiser, combined with their twin head boring tool. And then we've got some solid carbide drills and thread forming taps. Tony, we've managed to collar you at the end of the day. Hopefully the throat's good enough to just give us a few more words. How has day one been? Day one's been fantastic. We've had over 100 visitors through the door. Um, I'd really like to thank everybody for taking the time to visit Mills today. I know everyone's got a busy schedule. Hopefully they'll take something away with them. And, uh, but there's still a day left, so uh, for people that didn't get a chance to come today, please come tomorrow.